Voices with Blake. Listen and watch Voices with Blake on Dan Blake TV on YouTube. Voices with Blake podcast. We're back. Episode two. It's fantastic to be back. Big shouts to my first guest, Leon Haynes, A and R executive from Polydor Records. We had an amazing chat about his career and life in music and his journey. And I just wanted to salute some of my friends that I know and in my phone book. We come and hang out. We talk about life. We talk about your career and your industry and what you do and why that's special to you and what makes you tick in that industry and how we can share those gems with other people that's up and coming. So voiceover, it's a business if you don't know that I'm in. I'm in I've am in. been in it for, what, 10 years, I would say now. Started in like 2011, I believe. And I've got an agent doing my thing. This man here has got an agent, Nick Bright, and we share the same agent. He's a voiceover actor, radio presenter. And I'm just here with him just to get a couple of gems so we can just share to the, the people that come up to you and say you want to get in the industry, the voiceover business, how to get into it. So the question I get asked a lot is, um, how do you like get an agent in the voiceover business? What's the best way to get an agent, you know? It's, it, do you know what? The whole agent thing is a little bit of a wrestle for me. Yeah. And it always has been in that, like... I feel like you, you don't need an agent until you need an agent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, in yeah, in yeah. that, like, um, as long as you can do stuff independently for as long as possible, you always should, mm. right? But I understand that the voiceover industry is very different to, like, mm. say, like, the music industry. Yeah. A lot of artists now put music out independently, don't they? Yeah. Um, and a lot of artists don't even sign to a label because mm. they're like, I'm smashing it by myself. Yeah. But that's because they can put the product out online and people want to yeah, consume it. to the masses, yeah. But with doing voiceovers, it's very, it's very different, isn't it? Yeah. It's a very specialist, very niche kind of industry. Very so an agent niche, yeah. does become quite integral and quite important to what you do. So my first piece of advice is um, <laughs> there is no route. Yeah. And honestly, I know it sounds really frustrating to hear that because when I was starting out it, it, as a broadcaster... And I'd be like, how do you get on the radio, blah, blah, blah. And people would say, well, there's no real answer. I'd be like, but there must be. Like, because you're doing it, and I, but everybody's yeah, journey is different. So, it. like, for me, I got an agent. I was originally signed to an agency called Wise Buddha. Um, and I got signed to them because I was doing the radio. Yeah. I was lucky enough to get a show on BBC Radio 1 Extra. And they obviously heard me and saw me there. And then they wanted to sign me. Um, so that's kind of how it happened for me. But... To be honest with you, if you're starting out from ground zero, if you've got nothing, if, you, if you've nothing. never done a voiceover, yeah, yeah. You, you, you literally just, you've just thought about it because you've seen a, an advert on TV and you're like, I'd quite like to do that. Or they know, or they know you or follow you and they hear you and yeah, want yeah. to get into it. Like, you know, that's, an, that's another thing I would what, say. What I would say is you need to put together a demo yeah. of some kind, um, which again, is so difficult because you might not have any experience in using... Um, you know, sequencing software uh, yeah. or, or audio editing software to even think about putting together a demo. But like, I'm sure you can find somebody who can help you with that side of things. It might end up costing you, which, you know, is unavoidable. But if you know somebody who knows how to do that, great. But what I would say is listen to the radio, go on YouTube um, or watch TV yeah, and just watch TV. Yeah, and and just like yeah. check the adverts. Yeah. Listen to the adverts. Listen how they're delivering the voiceovers, the tone, how it changes, the oh, pace, yeah. how it changes. Um, you know, if it's a selly thing, for example, like I do the voiceover for the MTV chart, and on the MTV yeah. chart, it's very much like you're listening to MTV yeah, yeah, with yeah. me, Nick Bright, blah yeah. blah blah. Like it's really like you <laughs> yeah. know, it's very up tempo, yeah, yeah. energy up. Yeah. As, and as you can hear, my voice when I'm speaking to yeah. you is is different. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's down. But then yeah. equally, I've done voiceovers in the past where yeah. it's like a lot more somber. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's just something you have to deal with. You can't be you know one thing all the time. Yeah. But yeah, that demo is so important. So even if you make adverts that aren't real yeah um that's fine because people only want to hear what you sound like mm. you know you're giving people a flavor into how you sound and your variation and what you can do and then hopefully when they hear that demo they'll be like right i want to sign you but then the hardest bit for me and still 12 years in in the industry is reaching out to people that i don't know to be like, do you want to sign me? Because yeah. you're putting yourself out there, you know, even as, even as, um, Scrutiny. Yeah. well, just even as an established person in mm. the industry, you can still be denied, Yeah. yeah. you know, and that still happens to me all the time, you know, um, 
just because I do radio shows and blah, 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 I can't just... <laughs> it's funny because my mum will say to me, like... Because she obviously doesn't work in this industry or understand yeah. this industry. But my, my, my mum will say to me, like... When Dermot O'Leary, you know, remember when he stopped doing X Factor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And Ollie Murs and Caroline Flack yeah, stepped in. Yeah. Um, my mum was like, "Why couldn't you do? Why, why couldn't you get that?" Yeah. And I'm like, "That's it's not <laughs> yeah. how the industry yeah, works." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and voiceovers is is not too dissimilar. You know, my mum will say to me like, "Can't you just do a voiceover yeah. for, I don't know, Mercedes?" Yeah. And I'm like, mm, "I'd yeah. love to." You know. <laughs> so so the, the the point I'm trying to make is that like it's not. No matter what you do, that next gig is not a gimme, you know, mm. like... It's not guaranteed. No, it's, yeah. it's definitely not. So you yeah. always have to graft. So I still find it difficult now to put myself out there, to, to email somebody and be like, um, you know, hi, especially if I don't know them and be like, can you get me on this thing or blah, 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 because they might just say no. Yeah. Uh, or they might not reply at all. In fact, I prefer when they do say no, because at least then you're not left wondering. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's difficult, but you'll get over it. Um, and if you're keen, most people in this industry that I've met anyway, they're cool, you know, and, and, and they like people that are keen because uh, you're showing an interest mm. in a in what is a, quite a specialised industry. You know, like yeah. I said, the voiceover industry is like, it is a bit of a mad industry, really. It's just full of people who have unique sounding voices and just talk on adverts and stuff like that, which yeah. is a bit weird, isn't it, really, yeah, when it you think about it. But it's a massive... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, when I say massive industry, I don't mean like that the industry is, is huge because it's actually quite a small industry. Yeah. I mean, it's massive in that like your voiceover can be heard by millions of people, you know, that's exactly, crazy. Exactly. And, um, yeah, let's toast to that though. Yes, Papa. Oi, right. oi. Yeah. Mm. It's toast to that voiceover greatness, you know. Oi, boy, mm. I'm going to be smashed coming out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what we do on Voices with Blake. We toast to life, toast to, you know, giving you your flowers. You know, I've watched your voiceover career. And also, you know, we've kind of been doing voiceovers similar at the same time, mm. doing our thing. And just to, you know, if people want to hear my perspective on um on the voiceover business. And people ask me all the time, like, oh, how do I get into the game or get hit up randomly or... How did you get your agent? And I, I, sometimes I, I just don't know what to say. Yeah. Sometimes, bro, it's to hard be because it's like you know, you know it's, I mean? it's a it's a mix of talent and luck. You Prime know, as, luck. as as anything is. You know, yeah. you 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 might get introduced to somebody through somebody else, yeah. and then you know they might say, "Oh, your voice sounds good," yeah. and, and blah blah, blah and, and that's yeah. how it rolls on. Yeah, because what my my entry was at the student radio conference in 2011. Exactly, I, I entered just by everyone egging me on from Smoke Radio. They was like, "Oh, you got a good voice, Dan." Entered the competition. I wasn't going to enter. What conference was that? Um, it's the one in two, 2011. But where was it? It was in um, Bradford. Yeah, Bradford. Yeah, it was Bradford. Yeah, it was. Because I was Bradford. at that one. Yeah, it was in Bradford, and there was like a competition. Because uh, I was on, I was on a, vo- a voiceover panel. Oh, you were on the panel. Yeah, yeah. I think it may have been the one before that. I can't remember where that one. No, the one before that was in Hertfordshire. Boom. Right. Hertfordshire Uni. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. West I know was the one. DJ. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to the Bradford one a year later. I think I was signed by then. Right. Um, You'd already made Buddha. it. Yeah. Kind of, mm-hmm. but I, I, we'll get to that. But like, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I entered this competition. That's and then I ended up right, okay, the end of the competition, whatever, da, 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 entered it. Then I left, you know, the you know it's like a three day conference. Yeah. I left to go and I was still remember, I was still strongly MC in those times. I left to go and do a studio session with a Canadian grime MC. I think you've played him, Trey Mission. Trey Mission, yeah, yeah. I was so about I to, to say. Yeah, I went to go and do a tune with him and then done the tune, come back to the conference. <laughs> Then people said, oh, Dan, you know, yesterday you was announced, in, somebody was calling out someone called Brain Loke, <laughs> a top 10 contender. I was like, who's Brain Loke? Because they spelt my name with an E at the yeah, end. Yeah. And obviously I spell it Brain Loke, double K. And I was, an, I was a finalist. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, they like my voice. And then all of a sudden they like the voice. And then I didn't win it, but I was like, oh, this is a thing. Like, then my mind started thinking about it then. Before that, voices on TV were just voices on TV yeah. to me. I, I didn't, didn't even think, think about it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think, it's, oh, I'm going to make some money from mad. this. I was thinking, oh, they're doing their thing. I didn't, I didn't have a second thought to think I want to be a voice of rat or anything. Acting, I knew, was acting yeah. on the screen, trying East to be Enders. Will Smith, EastEnders, <laughs> or trying to be someone on Friday or something. Like, you know what I mean? Or EastEnders, as you say, Bianca. cultural program. <laughs> Bianca, <laughs> Ricky, Janine, Janine. That's filmed Come from on, up the road mate. from where Come we are on, now, yeah, isn't it? Sonia. Literally around the corner. Sonia, mate. And, I, and um, yeah, bro, so... 
when I ended the competition, I was like, right, top 10, cool. But then what I started doing, I had my rap demo. Then I was handing my CD around. I handed it to Matt Fisher at the BBC. Yeah. Sound producer. I said, here's my CD. Maybe you can play my track on the radio. I'll give it to someone. And he went back after the conference. And then Patrick, another sound producer at the yeah. BBC, gave me a call. Big up, I was like, yeah, don't really like your song too much, I don't think. But <laughs> we like your voice. And then he invited me into Voice Dubstep Week for that big campaign when mobile phones were starting to do the whole app thing at the time. Yeah. One extra started to go into the app world. Everything technology was changing those times. And then all of a sudden, I was I was thrown in, in the deep end. These times, going to the BBC weren't like it was, um, like it was, um, how can I say? It's not like it is now, where like everybody's getting a lot of radio, artists get radio play pretty early in their careers. Yeah. When I was coming up like in my era, it was very hard to get a play on Radio 1 or 1 Extra. It was even, You had to be really of some calibre yeah. to get radio play then time. And when you did get to the building for an interview or something, it would be like... Because like, we're coming from pirate radio and all yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. So getting into the BBC building was like, it was a dream. I'm not ju- it was a dream. I don't think you ever forget. Yeah. I remember the first yeah. time I went to the BBC. It was a dream. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's mad. You Absolutely don't forget that. iconic. So I'm there all of a sudden. I'm swifted in. And we'll go back to you. I don't want to talk about myself too much. So we were swifted in. And then I was like, rah. I was starstruck. I got in starstruck. I'm in a booth about to do this voiceover. I couldn't I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so Patrick, he's guided me. Like, yeah, say it like this, say it like this, give it this top. Was this in get... the was this in the where the where it is now? Was this in the no, old this building? This is the classic building. The old one, yes, yeah, 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 so you're at OG yeah, like yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah come on. OG, we've got a toast that. Great Portland Street. Yeah, yeah, Great Portland Street, <laughs> BBC, Yarding House, if you know, you know. <laughs> mm. Third floor, Third. if you were with Patrick then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Trust me, memory lane. He was on reception. He was on security. Um, Billy, was it? Billy, Billy. Billy, Billy legend security, Billy. Uh, Claire, yeah. on, Claire on reception. Claire on reception. Oh. Honourable shout-outs. Um, legendary times. So, yeah, I get into the studio now. I'm there. But then I'm nervous, bro. This is my first voice over these times. I didn't even know what it is, what he wants me to do. Yeah. They just like you my just voice, don't, It's apparently. mad, isn't it? You don't know. Because yeah. yeah. I remember my first voice over feeling exactly the you same. What to do. Like, I, and for me, it, it was... Like, what you say there, you, yeah. you come from an artist perspective yeah. where, like, normally yeah, artists yeah. are quite confident people yeah. because you have to express yourself yeah. into a microphone yeah, 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 yeah. As, a, as a rapper. Yeah. But, like, for me, I, w- I was a radio presenter yeah. and I knew how to present radio because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it on community radio yeah. before I got signed to One Extra and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then when you do a voiceover... Different. Especially, like... Because my very first voiceover, right, it was for MTV. Okay. Again, I've been working with MTV yeah. for a long time. Okay, I remember exactly what it was. Mm. It was for a program called The Family Cruise. Oh, and it was okay. it was Terry <laughs> Crews. You know Terry Crews, the yeah, muscly yeah. guy from yeah, White yeah. Chicks yeah, and yeah, um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah, and, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You know, in, in Bear stuff. Funny guy. I've interviewed yeah. him, actually. Good guy. Oh, I love that. And um, he... He had a, a reality show about his family, yeah. I think. And it, literally, but I'm, I'm sitting in the booth now and I'm like, I f- again, feel like an imposter because I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. know. Like, I've never done this. I don't know what to do here. Like, never. yeah. So so when they were like, right, just read the script. I was, I was like nervous. Nervous. Super nervous. Bro. But like, it, it came out all right. So, and I still yeah. work with MTV to this day. That, that, so That's what we're talking. Like, and then I remember going back to that dubstep week. I was there, yeah. And then what happened is, like, I was in the studio, I froze a bit. Then what he said to me, Tim Westwood was on, four to seven. I remember it like it was Drive yesterday. time, yeah. Drive time, four to seven. Westwood doing his thing. These times, they're the Lisa. Big honourable shout-out to the Lisa doing her thing at Amazon nowadays. Um, just for context, was a, you know, iconic radio producer at the BBC many years. Yeah. And um, she was producing Westwood at the time. And she was in there, I think another one of Westwood's producers, they was in there. So they said, Patrick's gone to me. He's gone, go and relax in there for a bit. Let's go and hang out. So these times I've gone in now. I'm starstruck again. I'm like, it's Westwood, the guy <laughs> I've always wanted to get radio play from. I've listened to my whole life, like, hip-hop music growing yeah. up. He's the only guy you had was playing hip hop when I was like, growing yeah, up. Yeah, when you were growing up, Westwood on a Friday and a Saturday. Yeah. You, you you had um two seven nine on 279, choice as well. You know, yeah. Shorty Blitz on Kiss, Shorty but Blitz. like Westwood was the guy. Was the you know guy. I mean? If you know, you know from that era, he was the guy Saturday night, that's what you listen to religiously if you wanted to know anything about He was on both nights though, wouldn't he? Yeah. You remember the it? It's Friday. Oh yeah, it's Friday, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Friday, that's a Friday. Yeah. yeah. 
Friday and then Saturday, Goldfinger man. was on after it. Oh, yeah, Goldfinger, nah, Wreckage, Dancer. Come and on. That. Yeah, you know, you know, those days. And you would never miss radio those days. No way. Because you needed your fix, otherwise you weren't up Because you needed to tape it, bro. Yeah, That's why you never it. missed it. There weren't no BBC yeah, yeah, iPlayer yeah. or BBC <laughs> Sounds to no, rerun the show. No BBC Sounds You were like, I need to hear Westwood and Trevor Nelson so I can tape them shows. TDK, bro. So I, yeah, the TDK... Crystal Palace, big up oh, them guys. Crystal Palace, oh mate. Like, yeah, you the, know, you needed that. Bro, and then man's, man's hanging on the show, and then I'm chilling, we're getting a bit more relaxed, a bit loose, first time in the BBC now, getting a bit more comfortable. Then, guess who just pops in the studio? Mm-hmm. Then I just realised, right, this is a proper, like, anyone can happen, anything can happen kind of place. Eve walks in from Rough Riders, and, um, honourable shout out to even Bun B walks in as well, the rapper, like, so they've come in for Gumball 3000 this race to bro. do an interview. So I'm now stars. I'm like bloody yo Eve. Hang on, like, can I can I tell you yeah. something? I keep butting in on your story, <laughs> yeah. but this is a mad day you're telling me about. It's crazy. But this do you is know, the do first you know day why? Of voiceover. But do you know why? Why? Because what happened that day? Yeah. Is I I remember that day. You well, remember that day as well. Because oh, sick, because sick. I was there. <laughs> you was there. Because what happened? Wow. Well, is is I was recording an interview in the studio next door. Wow. With. Lethal Bizzle and Emmanuel Frimpong. I was doing an interview oh, with those two. Man. He was there. And then what happened is Westwood had to leave his show early yeah. to go and do a booking in Newcastle and or something. Over, didn't you? And they said to me, yeah, you took over. go in with Eve, yeah. Bun B, yeah. <laughs> flipping yeah. Bizzle and Frimpong. Yeah, you took over. All of us went into the yeah. studio yeah. and it was like this weird mega show of like Eve and, and like me and Eve still laugh about that to this day. Cause you know she lives in London now, I isn't hear it? This. She's I hear like this. She, the, the the guy that owns Gumball's her husband, yeah, like yeah, so yeah, they yeah, live in yeah, London. Yeah, yeah. And like whenever she comes on the radio, like yeah. she remembers that day as well because it was oh, chaos. Wow, wow. It's like <laughs> Lethal Bizzle wow. and Emmanuel Frimpong, who played for Arsenal, <laughs> were in there interviewing <laughs> Bumby and yeah, Eve about Gumball Rally. It was oh, like this mate, is what, flipping what, crazy. This is memories that you can't you can't script, bro. You know what I mean? Buzz room somewhere. Yeah, these are things you can't script. That's amazing. I remember now. Yeah, I think I remember now you coming coming off and, and finishing off the rest of the show. Yeah, that's, that's but, exactly what happened. I, yeah, I remember being on the first half of that and it was like, I was... Then Westwood brought me on mic and we started chatting and he was like, oh, you, you, you're a rapper? Like, he started giving me a little banter. You're gas now started at this doing, point. Like, he started doing... He said, what kind of rap style? I was like, oh, it's all hip hop, blah, blah. And he was like, oh... Like you got a little deep voice and he said, asked Delisa and that like you like his vibe and they're like yeah 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 and he started putting on some Barry White samples on a banter thing <laughs> <laughs> you know how he does he's smooth with the banter so he, all of a sudden he bung out a Barry White jingle he started out of pieing you yeah, after that you five seconds he started pieing me a Barry White jingle classic Westwood but I was mate. like yeah, but I was like, where did you get the jingle from I was like that, in my mind I was like that's radio magic yeah. how did he do that and he transitioned so quick into the next track, I couldn't even come back. Yeah, I'm that's what done. he used to do, bro. Right? <laughs> he would he would shut you down so and not and not give you an opportunity to respond. I loved it, but I was like, that was my little moment in the West with the radio. And then after that, long story short, bro, I was so comfortable. Met Eve, took a picture with Eve. Man, man was like, I was so gassed to be being a big Rough Riders fan. Honorable shout, rest in peace, DMX. Big Rough Riders fans are taking a picture of even meeting her, chopping it up. Then Bun B was there again, another fan of him. That I was mad relaxed after that. Yeah. So I went in back to the studio to patch. I was like, yo, just chill. Did the voiceover. Then went and just banged out the voiceover. Dubstep Week campaign, first one out of the park. So what I'm saying to people is that, bruh, my story was just luck to be faced. Right place at the right time. I was just moving about, networking. Then I fell into an industry that 10 years later, now like I'm doing... Massive jobs. I'm introducing EastEnders on TV, like you know what I mean. Stuff that match of the day to like working for big companies like BT Music advert. I even done an advert for WWE into Raw, WWE mm. Raw and shit. That music must have been ads, sick. But yeah. And I'm a big wrestling fan, so hearing myself like in between Sky Sports doing a wrestling that, I was like, my Asia, you don't need to do no more work for me. No, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, like you still do. You but, do, do, uh, yeah. do a lot. But, That's uh, the thing about voiceovers, yeah. though. It's, it's it's like up and down. The, yeah, but the, the companies that you get to work with oh, amazing. are yeah. yeah, it's yeah. it's it's incredible. So like I never forget I did I did yeah, one for yeah. I did one for Nintendo, yeah. um Splatoon, you know the game yeah, Splatoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a big campaign for Nintendo. Yeah. And they um the advert was on everywhere, on T V, yeah. like I was just getting bare people like this is you on the yeah. Splatoon advert oh, in it. Like and um 
the maddest thing was that one was on in the cinema as well. Oh, wow. and, I, and I went to the cinema to yeah. watch. I can't even remember what I went to see. I went to yeah. watch something in the cinema and then the advert came on and I was just in the cinema like with the, the maddest screen and the maddest Dolby flipping, yeah. you know, sound system. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like the, the thing about being a voiceover artist as well mm. that I quite like because yeah. I don't like, and, and look, everybody differs on this yeah. and, and this is no judgment. It's just mm. my personal opinion. Yeah. I don't like the idea of fame and you know, everybody knowing who you are yeah, and blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm and exactly that, and don't get me wrong, it, because I do a bit of TV and yeah. stuff like that, it does come yeah. as a byproduct of, yeah. you know, what I do. But yeah. the, the, the good thing about being a voiceover artist yeah. is in that moment yeah. when I'm sat in that cinema, yeah, yeah I'm, and the cinema was packed as yeah. well, nobody, nobody in that cinema had a clue that it was my voice yeah. banging out of that nobody. system. Not yeah. one person. And yeah. that, to me, is like a bit of a weird, like... I quite like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dev, Dev used to say that. Who's a, who's a radio oh, presenter here? Um, Dev, yeah. He 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 always used to say like he loves the idea that he could be on Radio One, yeah. which is the biggest youth station in the yeah. country. You know, millions of people listen to Radio One, yeah. and then he could walk out of the building Lonely. and walk past people, and they they've got no idea who he is. Like they might even listen to the show, but they don't know who That's he is right. because yeah. you know some people don't get me wrong know what radio presenters look like and yeah. blah 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 but a lot of people don't know what they look like yeah, innit? Yeah, they yeah. just know what they yeah, sound yeah. like so. yeah, unless they're like trying to I don't know cross over into a lot of TV yeah. commercial TV and stuff like that exactly but yeah I feel you bro like that's what I love about the industry as well that I can just go in a booth do an advert you know and no, no, I can step out no one not know at all what's going on you know I, I, it's something, something real real dope about that you know and again I, I'm not really a fame person either man I like I love I like what I do I like the craft of what I do you know what I mean I like I like the little nerdy bits of yeah. voiceover and radio I like broadcasting having different hats on you know when you're doing broadcasting you're working on your junctions you're working on your tones you're working on being a better broadcaster and presenter you know you just been watching your journey in the commercial radio and i've learned a lot of stuff from you just by listening to you and working with you about the way you transition into things you know i've i've brought that into my own kind of work you know just yeah, seeing yeah. you do that consistently for so many years you know? but listen it's, it's a it's, it's a very unique skill yeah. and, and thank you for that but it's, yeah. a, it's a it's like <laughs> Like in, in like broadcasting, especially being on the radio, yeah. a lot of the things that you learn or, or need to know that are imperative to yeah. the, the the show, you will never use them anywhere else other yeah. than on the radio. But they're still it's still stuff that you have to know. You know 100%. what I mean? Um, and I take pride in, in in you know trying to be the best that I can at mm. those things. Mm. Uh, but being going back to your point about fame and and, and voiceovers yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. there are some people out there who are some of the biggest voiceover artists mm. doing the biggest jobs, yeah. you hear their voices all the time, but a lot of people have no idea what they look like or who they are. Nothing. So like, for example, the, maybe people in the media industry know what the X Factor voiceover man looks yeah. like. You know I mean? You know the guy yeah, who's Dixon. like, hello, yeah. you know that guy, like everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody knows yeah. his voice, yeah? yeah? yeah but yeah. like, I guarantee you there's bare people that walk past him in the street and they have absolutely no idea who this guy is yet he's on the biggest tv shows the biggest adverts you know what i mean like mm. and he like i look, I, I can't talk about a man's finances because i've got no idea yeah. but like i he's know secured, yeah certain. i know yeah. that this guy is absolutely raking yeah, it in from secured. doing his voiceovers and i've heard that like he's so much secured. so that obviously pre-covid mm. he was like he would like have like a mobile kind of setup yeah and like he would be on cruise ships and that, and then like just on like holidays and that, on yeah. cruise ships and that, and wow. he would still be booking jobs because yeah. he can just like plug the mic in. He had one of those like wrap around yeah. um, screens, and like just be banging voiceovers out like on a on a cruise ship in the Caribbean. Like, can you imagine how nice that is? That's like, that's like the legendary Don Fontaine, you know, the, you know, yeah. in a world, you know. Apparently, I big honorable shout out to Joan Baker um you know she's a, a vocal coach from the states um she used to work with him he's a legend he used to create of the whole in a world in a world phrase that's that's that that's what you're that's what you're working on sure that's working what you're working on, towards I'm working towards but like, um, it's such a classic phrase but it's like he used to be in and out of i think he done over 20,000 uh, movie trailer voiceovers and he used to be in and out of um, limousines constantly around the states just doing voiceovers just like the cruise ship kind of energy you know? mad and like, i'm like oh man i've, I've got life. Like, i don't have that that style of voice but i i had to um yeah. in a let me let me let me let me let me find something for you i i um <laughs> i had to um 
See, Blake's got that though. You can do that. I can't really do it. My, my voice ain't right, but because I do stuff at MTV, I had to do, I had to do a voiceover for Snoochie Shy. She's Snoochie Shy. she's doing a um she's a presenter. She's she's Shout doing a Snoochie thing Shy. with um excellent love her work. She's doing a thing with AJ Tracy on oh, MTV, no. and oh, I really? had to do the voiceover. AJ Tracy. <laughs> oh, you <don't. laughs> Snoochie Shy. Ah, <laughs> you went gravel. I love it. Mixing up your style. I love it. And then at the at the end of the ad, it, it just flips into my normal. <laughs> Where is it? You'll hear it. Oh. They're like shooting hoops at the minute. Uh, oh my God, that's go for it. It's coming. So yeah, so yeah like. I had to do that. Ah, like, solid, solid, solid. So what happened? The guy, the guy that I record the MTV yeah. chart with, he was just like, because he knows I can do like voices. Yeah. Like you know, that, do you know that Wellerman song that was in the charts? You all know it. It's that sea shanty song. Like long way the Wellerman come, the oh, Wellerman yeah, yeah, come. Yeah, yeah. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Like I don't know what that. Yeah. It's a crap song. I yeah. don't like it. But yeah. like it was in the charts, and like because because it, a sea shanty yeah. is. Um, is something that like fishermen used to yeah, sing back yeah. in the day or something mm. like whenever he used to write the chart for me to voice he would always do some kind of pirate pun mm. around the song wellerman yeah. and he would he would want me to kind of like do like a pirate voice like ar like you know like just like flip <laughs> yeah. into like like army hearties oh, <laughs> like like yeah. and, and like I, part of the when you do voiceovers voices, yeah. like part of it is having the confidence mm. Because like you said, you yeah. I think you touched on it really yeah. nicely a minute ago when you said you sat in the booth for that first vo that first voiceover mm. that you had to do and yeah. you were nervous, yeah, you were yeah. tight, you yeah. didn't know what to say, like how to do yeah. or like which is which a lot of people will have that. Mm. But like part of it comes from experience 100%. of doing it, yeah. but like also just letting yourself go a bit oh, and just having fun in Be there. Free, having yeah, yeah. fun. Cuz a lot of the time yeah. the, the the people recording the session as well mm. You know they're they're quite bored when people are just kind of being boring. Yeah, you know, they're not having a little chit chat with the with the people behind the scenes. And this is some tips as well for up and coming videos when you're getting booked. Just getting the energy right, getting the aura right. Yeah. The studio session, the way you're meeting the clients. I've been in sessions with like some of the biggest companies in the world and having seven, eight of the executives in the session with me, waiting. They look, you know, and they they got deadlines. They've got whatever they need, and they're waiting on this voiceover, thinking, wow. You better deliver, but I'm trying to make sure it's comfortable and they're relaxed enough to know that. Don't worry about that. I got you. I'm gonna do this job perfectly fine. We're gonna walk out of there, and then hopefully you're gonna book me again nicely. It comes. Everything's with, but, cool. But that know? comes with experience, yeah, though. Because like again, at the start, I can remember my first voiceover being really shy oh, uh, yeah. in there, and I'm not really a shy person. Yeah. But like just being in there, not really chatting. Yeah. Not not that I was like ignoring the people, yeah. but just like you know, not really networking, not yeah. really chatting. Um, and then, like, when I left, it was just like, thanks, see you later. Like, and, and, and like, I kept it professional, obviously. Mm. But, like, now, like you rightfully say, when I go and do a, a, a job, if it's a big job as yeah. well, this COVID's really, like, oh, fucked yeah. a lot of yeah, shit up, though, because it's all, like, yeah. remote, you know? Like, yeah. I want to be, like... For me, so much of what I do is, like, chatting to people in the yeah. flesh is different, you know? Yeah. Like, but if it's a big job, but I just chat to them and find out about the, the company yeah. and, and yeah, you know, like, just, just things like that and... You know, I, I don't know whether they know what's going on in terms of like, oh, this guy's just trying to schmooze us or what. But yeah. like, I'm sure they appreciate it anyway that you actually take an active interest in what it is that they're doing and yeah. the companies that they've worked for. Yeah, you know? this is it. Voices with Blake. Listen and watch Voices with Blake on Dan Blake TV on YouTube. I remember when I done the WWE one, I was so gassed. Like, I got in the studio. Met the guy, he booked the job. I was just like, oh, thank you so much for being You've done me some this big job. ones, man. Like that, I, I nearly cried when I done the W. Yeah. I, was, I was emotional because I'm a big, I'm a kid. Like wrestling was my thing. I wasn't like I didn't grow up like as a big like boxing fan. I ain't gonna front. I was more like WWE. Like I think Hulk all Hogan, kids all were though. Same me, you know. So what I mean, when I was like watching Raw and I'm hearing my voice, I was like raw. Like, but then I was talking to the guy, just asking him about knowledge of the company. What other games do you book? Because it was for the video game, um, WWE 2K. Was it 2K18? I think it was yeah. at the time. It was, and um, it was like. Then we was talking, he was like, hey, you want me to send you the game? I was like, we just thought, and then all of a sudden, he just sent me the game, like, you complimentary. Did, you you did me... Mafia as well, didn't yeah, you? Oh, the, that the was Mafia a moment. Game. And the thing, was Mafia, you know when that hit me? When I done, just for context, I done the video game, Mafia 3 for PlayStation, a pretty big game. But um, I remember I was at One Extra Live. I think you must have been there, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. 
So I was there at these times. I was working at One Extra as a producer, and it was with everybody like production. This is the one where it was the one where Lady Leisha performed Stormzy headlined. Yeah, and yeah. I, I was with all the One Extra production team. I think we even rented some of the same spots, and we were just hanging out. I remember in the hotel, or whatever. And then my thing just come on TV, like, and I was just there, like, raw, like, big map. Was that three. in that 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 like round hotel? That yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that like, oh, just across the main road from the arena. No, no, we 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 weren't even living like that. We, we was in, we was there. So we had some B and B. We was on some bed oh, and breakfast. You had some good thing. one. All right, cool. <laughs> no, we weren't, weren't living your life. Mm. It was me. It was me. Like, is it, it me, David, Josh? <laughs> and all of oh, us okay. <laughs> Dave and Josh as well. Yeah, yeah, you definitely had the hood one. Yeah, I was with the hood squad. So yeah, we was in a B and B right next to Anfield. Literally one oh. minute. From Anfield Stadium, like literally. Yeah, no, them, yeah. Them, them parts of the city as well, they're not... Uh... Yeah, I didn't, I'm not from there, so I don't know. But you like, should have hired me, bro. I know the city well. You should, like, I would have said, like, avoid that mate, area. I didn't have like, a clue, mate. Like, I was rolling along. Everton, Anfield. Yeah, they were telling me stories about the back garden or whatever. Everton down the road, it was yeah. funny. But anyway, yeah, then seeing it on TV, I was like, raw. That was probably, I would say, my biggest campaign, yeah, Massive. Just seeing it everywhere, yeah. seeing it on the front page of YouTube, on the TV, just just everywhere at one time. I was like, "Wow, this is actually this worse of a business." Like, right, it's serious, you know. Yeah. If you like get the right job it's, and you're, you it's know, such a funny industry though because yeah. there's like people think because you know the industry that I come from. Yeah. Like, don't, and don't get me wrong, the majority of my voiceovers are kind of. Um, compilation albums and stuff like that. Yeah, like I've done, yeah, I've yeah. done loads of those yeah. you know, over the years. Yeah. Um, I've done actual albums. I did, I did Rihanna's, done actual, yeah. Rihanna's anti album. I did Dr- one of Drake's albums. Oh, I'm um, trying to see if I can compete with you. I done, I done a bit. I done Khaled's. Done a okay, that's DJ a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I, I've done one of DJ Khaled's as well, but I think it was. Um, like obviously, obviously, wasn't the latest one that just yeah. came out. I think it was like two before this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I, I do a lot of things like that. But then equally, I did something for. Oh, was it the? It was one of the Scandi countries. I think it might have been the the, the Norwegian Tourism Board. Okay. <laughs> R- it, bruv, and this is what I'm on Norwegian about: random, random jobs that just yeah. come in, and it's like yeah. they 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 basically they basically they wanted to attract more young people to come yeah. to Norway to do. Um, I don't know mountain biking yeah. and like some of the cool stuff that they get up to in Norway and and like they just they contacted me and asked me to do this voiceover and it was mad like so I did that like and people think people think that like I don't well, I don't know about you but for me yeah. like people seem to make a snap judgment on like oh well that's your thing that's what you do yeah, but actually yeah, no 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 this is and also I would say yeah I feel like I have on purpose I've tried to diversify my styles like I make sure that I I know it's a big industry mm-hmm. but when I know when, when I started getting the first jobs I said alright let me take this thing more seriously let me get nerdy about it let me start seeing what the cadences are looking at other voices of right seeing how they enunciate stuff how I can improve how I can get better speaking to my agent when I got signed how I can improve what kind of reels I can put together so I started thinking about it strategically then I realised well, alright look at all the styles up and coming out what way service look at all the styles you can, you think you can do and do them instinctively in your head if you think alright I can do a soap advert I know I can do this I don't know Jamaican accent I know I can do a Nigerian accent do them put them on your reel do your strongest areas first so you've got them out there and then if you can feel like you want to grow and diversify, give it a shot. Like, you know what I mean? Grow on the different styles because those different styles are all industries. Yeah. They're all, they're all like, there's an industry in the continuity field. There's an industry in the, in the promo field. There's an industry in the audio books field. There's an industry in the corporate jobs field. Yeah. There's all different industries within one voice of a business. That's what people need to recognise. So if you can diversify and sound organic and natural... Yeah, yeah natural being the key then you're good i had it, yeah. i had to do some internal stuff because not everything that i've voiced goes out on telly or yeah. goes like I, I i did some like internal voice oh, reels for for lad bible, oh, lad and, bible it, and that yeah. was basically like them demonstrating the amount of subscribers that they have the yeah. amount of hits that they get you know what i mean the amount of followers they've got yeah. and like so you know sometimes it's it's things like that like, that, like you rightfully yeah. say a straight narration yeah but like one of the things that you're doing, and I'm sure you've spoken about mm. this on the podcast, is yeah. um, 
continuity. Yeah, yeah. And I did do some continuity. I yeah. did I did continuity for a channel called Five Star. Yeah. But it was it was pre recorded yeah. the stuff that I was doing. Mm. Like I'd go in on a Friday and then I'd bang out two weeks worth of continuity and then mm. you know, that was that. But for you you're doing live continuity, innit? Yeah, live continuity on BBC one and two. Um yeah, it's very different. Very different to the pre recorded continuity I did for BET, which was again kind of similar to Channel Five where I'll come in and five star, I'll come in and do a month's continuity in one session, where this is I'm live on a shift doing a um, live announcement night. I'm announcing other stuff that's being marketed from the marketing team mm. within the script. So I'm doing all of that, having to come up with the writing myself, rehearse the writing, then say it all in one shift. Yeah, see, there's a lot... There's a, <laughs> there, there, listen, there's a, there's a lot more to it than... Yeah. You know, some people think, don't get me wrong, you do get some jobs that are easy where the script is written for you and you just yeah. walk in and bang it out. Yeah. But then you get other ones where, yeah. you know, I did something for MTV relatively recently, the Movie and TV Awards for MTV. Oh, and it was bro. like wall to wall, bruv. Like, yeah. It was like an insurance advert in terms of like how quickly I had to deliver the, the wow. text. You know, when it's yeah. like, you know, when it's like you do the tag and the tag is like three seconds too long, yeah, yeah, which yeah, in, yeah. Like, like in the real world, three seconds don't sound like anything. Yeah. Let me tell you, in the voiceover world, three yeah, seconds is, yeah, yeah, it's like, so I had to do, I had to be like, Friday and Saturday night, I need MTV. Like, had to be yeah, like, yeah. like, like, bang it in. Like, it's just mad, bro. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, you're doing like, yeah, it's so tight because everything has to be by the second. Yeah. I've had to pre-record stuff that was supposed to go out because of that, you know, just because they need it a certain second length and stuff like that. But I would say, yeah, also, if you're up and coming, just know that the voice of a business is not all, it's not all just coming voice of advert. You need to be, you need to have patience, I would say. You need to have um, uh, feedback. If you can't take feedback, it's not a business for you as well because you need, there may make clients that may not even like your takes or the way you're yeah. saying stuff. So you've got to have the, the bravery to kind of just overcome that. Stay strong-minded within the session, then come again. But if you don't, then you lose that job right there and then. They'll go and get someone else Trust to do the me. job. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So you got to maintain all of them same energies within one session. No matter how, what kind of mood you're in coming out, coming before the session, you got to leave that at the door anyway. Yeah. That's another advice. Leave your energies at the door that you're coming with, what's going on in your life, and come in and just put on your hat. And I'm sure you do that on the radio as well. I was about well, to say, yeah, know? that's that's something that like yeah. I've always had to do anyway in, yeah. in, in, in my job and something that comes as second nature. Mm. Um, but I think that's something that people find tricky though, bro. Yeah. Real life, like, I noticed like real life things creeping over into their work when it comes to entertainment world, whether it's voiceover or radio or stuff like just, I think it's a good just to hear your kind of, story on that that would be just to hear your knowledge on you know perception on that what being able to leave yeah just keeping you know just be coming just to come in and be ready to yeah. do what you got to do with composure well, look, you and know, confidence you know there's been times in my life yeah. where like i'm going through you know tough things yeah whether it be you know breakups yeah. or just like personal stuff yeah. at home um and you know as you rightfully say when you when you do a voiceover um, I mean, I guess for me, it it's more to do with my radio career than my yeah, voiceover career yeah. because my voiceover, like voiceovers, I can go in and just I'm at the stage now where I can just bosh it out, yeah, like yeah. you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, sure. But um, with radio, it's a, it's a sustained kind of like three hour show, yeah, solid. Where you have to be like pe people are listening to the radio to have some level of escapism, some 100%. level of like, you know, they want some tunes, they mm. want to be entertained, they might want to have a bit of a laugh, you know. Yeah. And they might be going through some shit themselves, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like, that's why they put the radio on. Yeah. So they don't want to hear me droning on about like being upset about, um, you know, stuff that's bothering me in my personal life. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, I do moan a lot on the radio, <laughs> but like entertaining moaning entertaining, about like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know, like mundane stuff in my life. I can't think of something off the top of my head right yeah. now. But like, I'll never go on the radio and I don't know, cry about something that's happening to me personally. And 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 you know, I, I, some people might do that, hmm. and, and that, and that's cool for them. But I just think I'm in a position where people are listening for a little bit of escapism, and you have to try and remember that. You know, um, as gem talk right there. As yeah. as horrible as it sounds, because you might be going through it mm. or you might be like upset about something yeah. or, you know, I don't think that your listeners should ever have to put up with that as well. Yeah. Um, because it's, 
And I, and I think that about any job. Forget the yeah. entertainment business yeah. for a minute now. Like, I've, I take a real issue with, like, I don't know, if people work in an office. Yeah. You know, you get people who come into the office, they're going through a divorce or whatever, and then they, they start taking it out on their yeah. colleagues. Yeah. I'm like, you need to be able to check that, mm. you know? Yeah. Like, and that's just how I've always been. Maybe yeah. it's because I'm quite a... Um, I'm quite a private character yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is weird when you do such a public-facing mm. job. But, like... I'm very much somebody who does know how to check my emotions and yeah. kind of keep them to myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think professionally, you should always strive to do that, you know? Mm, that's great advice, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so, you know, you're getting a lot of gems here in this conversation here about voiceover, life, radio in general. You know, this is what we do with Voices with Blake. Um, I just want to shout out the podcast real quick and and the sponsors because you know we wouldn't be wouldn't be in here if it wasn't for the sponsors right now so text for gore advertising this podcast is sponsored by the garden of rhythm gore hosts live music events in london shining a light on new up-and-coming talents the next event is coming up soon it's in june it's going to be a vibe go to gardenofrhythm.com and you can find all the link and all the information and yeah, Nick, just trying to trying to wrap it up with like um, voiceover talk um, with the people, and thank you for sharing some you know some of your wisdom and gems. Um, yeah, I would say like this is the interesting part here. I wanna I wanna know some of the the cheeky things you use to kind of or may use to kind of I don't know help your voice or emphasize certain things when your voice is feeling strained, because I feel like. We, this is our instrument here and mm -hmm. this is what we do to for a living so it's like in times when the voice may be feeling like an injury like a football player is on the pitch what's the kind of stuff i'm gonna say a couple of my ones first what's the couple of kind of stuff that you use to kind of keep you going one of my things i'll tell you one little trick my laddie was laughing like what i do before a voiceover sometimes well, before every voice Not every voiceover. this is one for i do depending on the voiceover for it's a psychological thing and mood and it helps me even feel more confident when I do an announcement or something. Okay. I brush my teeth. <laughs> Again. I bring my toothpaste and my brush in my bag. I go to the bathroom before... Why? Over. Just because I feel like... You know, you brush your teeth in the morning. You may have an afternoon session. It gives you a new sense of freshness. And it, your mouth it just feels fresher again. Which means you're going to have a more confident... You know, voiceover. Because the mouth has got the fresh toothpaste in. That's, that kind of thing. It's random. Know, but that's yeah. one of them. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I, I it's confident as well. I've like. never thought of that, yeah. you know. Your never. mouth feeling fresh, so you're like, rough, fresh voice. And also, like, you're kind of like projecting. There Project, we go, because like, you're stinking fresh. Stinking out the place with your with your bad breath normally, right. so brush that. Bro, I've been doing it for a while, but that's one teeth. of my ones. Brush your teeth, brush your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one more of mine. Mine is a markers. I love highlighting keywords yeah. on a script. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. important for me. Voice over eyes. Because... I get highlighters, by the way. Highlighters, coloured highlights. I will always highlight at least three keywords minimum. The words that need to be um, kind of emphasised upon, in it, you know, like oh, like bro. for example, I'll give you an example off the top of my head because, yeah. like, like I said earlier, yeah. I do a lot of um, albums. Yeah. Normally, when you do an album, the voiceover nine times out of ten yeah. will always say something like, um, say something like. Anti, the incredible new album yeah. from Rihanna. Yeah. So it's like incredible straight <laughs> yeah. away. You can hear. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible or yeah. amazing yeah. Yeah. or like yeah. it's always yeah. like yeah. that. You know what I mean? And this. Yeah, this <laughs> is Anti, like the incredible, incredible. new album from Rihanna. <laughs> Featuring yeah. the hit singles, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. blah, 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 <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Anti, <laughs> from Rihanna. Out, out now. now. That's all. That's like the, like yeah. that is the structure, yeah, for structure. Like, a, like, a, like an yeah, album yeah. voiceover. Pacing, you know? tone, you know. I remember, yeah, like, Western, Into, the brand new single. Uh, you know, this kind of, that's the toning, you know, the Trust toning. Me. and the, You have to get that right. And those words, they need projection. Otherwise, it don't sell in a voiceover. Yeah. You know, that's, that's that's a good tip as well. You know, I don't have these tips. Like no, you, you got, got something, you, you got really good. You got really good kind of like, oh, make sure you highlight these words, blah blah. Because I I do that in my mind. I look at a script and I go right that word right there. That's what the one I'm gonna I'm gonna look bro, at. For me, know? yo, because I'm dyslexic, I can't, bro. Sometimes I've got to like just make a little mental note or something so it keeps me on track. So yeah, I yeah. don't my mind don't wander and go somewhere yeah. completely different. 
like, and I've missed it. Like, and I'm like, oh, but then I listen back and I, I'm, and I like to listen back to see where I could get better yeah. or something. I'm like, oh, you could have said that a bit, like a bit more gravitas or something like that. For, you know? for me, I try and get the script as soon as I can, so I can, yeah. so I can look at it and and work it out in my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I try to do that. But then sometimes, this sounds a bit mad. Like I. I one of my friends back in the day, this before, this when I was a kid, yeah. before I knew what I wanted to do with my life at all. Yeah. Um, one of my friends was in stage school. Yeah, I was stage in, school. Um, okay. in, in Shirley, in yeah. Croydon. And um, he, he, I went along with him one time just because it was a Saturday and there was nothing else to do. So like, I went along with yeah. him. And one of the things I used to do in stage school, and anybody who works in kind of performing arts can probably vouch for this, is they did like a vocal warm up. Yeah. Um, and the vocal warm up that they did in there, they were like, Mama made more, 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 more. <laughs> like they were doing this mama, 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 mama. so it's like I don't do that per se but it's like sometimes I might try mm. to um, try to like loosen up a little yeah, bit I guess. Up, yeah. like, I guess like yeah. I guess the analogy is like when you go to the gym you know yeah. what I mean you do a tutu stretching and that before yeah. you jump on the heavy weights or yeah. you jump on the treadmill go. or whatever yeah. um, because you have to yeah. you know so like it's the same with your voice. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're coming in cold. Um, oh, this is it. Coming in cold. Can yeah. Because you, you don't want to come in cold because you just can't get, you won't get the best, well, man. I don't know what it's like for you, but sometimes yeah. I'll do a voiceover, right? Mm. And we'll, we'll bang out, we'll bang out the voiceover. Yeah. And then at the very end of the session, the guy who is um, recording the session will yeah. say to me like, oh, let's just do the first line again yeah, yeah, as the yeah. last thing because it's like the when you're when you're when you come in cold mm. obviously the first line is the first thing that you do yeah, yeah, but yeah. your voice ain't warmed up yeah, yet, yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. you, you're not you're not going yeah you're not so going, it's like yeah. they'll, they'll do the first line again at the end not in yeah. every session yeah. but like in some sessions i've done they'll go let's get that first line again then we'll do it yeah, again and they'll yeah. go yeah that's the one it yeah. sounds 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 yeah, much nicer yeah, yeah, now yeah, yeah. you know yeah sometimes even sometimes they like that kind of like just come in that natural tone about thinking about anything and they, sometimes they take that it know, depends what you're doing occasions yeah it honestly depends on what you're doing like i yeah, i, I find that doing. like yeah. if you're doing a more natural voiceover in yeah. that like it's one where it's your your natural speaking yeah. voice yeah then that is more generally the case but if you're coming yeah. in and doing one where you've got to be up there yeah where you've got to put on like that gravelly voice yeah. or whatever like you, you sometimes you need to build up to it you yeah. know and it's interesting because i remember when you talk about character voices i remember i'd done one of my first character voices, voiceovers I'd done and I got booked for was Bego.com. And then I had to do, like, advert for Dan Belzerian and Mini-Me from Austin Powers, Rest in Peace. Um, and there was another, someone else was involved, and it was all animation kind of thing, characters. I'd done the adverts, and I had to do, like, he runs Bego.com, and he is the boss. <laughs> Bego.com, something, something, something. I can't remember now. It's been a while, but that was my first, like... Uh, kind of putting on the whole American accent kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, it's funny because when I went to the States and played it, um, and I, they, they were saying, they were some of the people that was listening to it there, I just played it to them. I was like, this is me doing an American accent. They were like, ah, we can hear you're not American. Yeah, straight so it's away. Like, so it's like, it's interesting because I got booked for that over here doing an American accent, and it went out everywhere. Yeah. But then when I went to America and Americans heard it, some Americans heard it, they were like, nah. Yeah, but bro, you know that. You're it was Brit interesting, like, you're, though. You're it, was like, it, was, it was interesting, we, though. <laughs> we know when they've got American actors yeah, doing British yeah. accents, so it's dead. Like, yeah. But Americans are probably watching that thinking, oh, my God, he sounds yeah. so British. This yeah. is amazing. But we're like, no. Nah, <laughs> don't <laughs> like <laughs> that was so interesting to me just by being over there and them hearing that voice over and i was like but you know i got booked up that the same way mm -hmm. i was like yeah so that's something like accent wise i think trying to think what other accents i've done yeah i think i've more just done more done a lot of natural reads a lot of the ground a lot of the the voice of god kind of stuff but yeah, then yeah. i get a lot of the um inspirational um inspirational sell something on an inspirational vibe kind of videos and I done something. I did, did you hear my one for Arsenal? See, I got love for I got love for the Gunners. You know. What did you do for? You didn't Arsenal? hear it. Uh, I have to pull it up right now on camera. What did you, What did you do for Arsenal? Bro, we never heard my Arsenal one. No, I must have missed that one. Bro, this this is the kind of stuff I feel like I get booked a lot to do. This kind of voice over here, and I was very proud of this one. To be fair, I was like raw, and I always play it to Arsenal fans. So, what you got for me? Oh mate, I want you to judge me as well. I want you to judge me if I can find it. All right, just switch YouTube channels, Dan. That's what you got to do here. We're doing this live on camera. Here we go. Voice with Blake. Live and direct. Live and direct. Inside the right selector. Oh, God. 
Sound like Twin B there. Shout out to Twin B, honourable shout out. I ain't seen him in a minute. Um, he still on one extra. No, Twin left a, a oh, while back, man. Twin Start, started his own record label with his brother. Oh, Def Jam something, yeah, right? Yeah. Def Jam. Shout out to Twin. Uh, here we go. Seven Def Jam. Jeez, Arsenal boys are about to get pull up. Here we go. Here we go. It was for a Fantastico swap, like a sticker thing linked with Arsenal. And yeah, here we go. Let me try to head to the phone. I'm obsessed. Every game, every weekend, home or away. Kickoff is our time. Ours to claim. Goals, assists, every fight for the ball. From the very first match, we've collected them all. Stats for each movement, the cards, free kicks. The rewards. No, hold on, I've got to read this. i got to give you the phone and you look at the actual voice. So what well. are you doing? That's the best way I'm putting it near the mic because you can. I want you to be the X Factor judge here. X Factor. Arsenal voiceover, guys. I'm a Man U fan. <laughs> Amy to see. Glory. Nah. When did you do this one? This was this was um two years ago I'd say. Where did you record it? Oh, I think it was at one of the Soho studios, man. You know, one of the ones just around the corner from um, Broadcasting House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one take. I remember. That was your job, though. I was like, right, that should have been Nick Wright's job, though. I can't nah, nah. lie. Sick. <laughs> yeah, sick. Yeah. Safe, bro. Uh, that one, that was, uh, yeah, I love doing something like I love doing those kind of like inspirational kind of adverts. But I just want to show people a little equipment here, just so you, people wondering what stuff to get out of there. I'm just going to show you a couple of props. Um, you can say what kind of mic. I don't, wait, they're getting free promo here, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I got, need to send you a free one. Yeah, I've got a road, yeah. Uh, wait, Nick, which one? I, I I can't even remember. I'm not so Take like techie, super techie. I just use it and that's it. Like so. That's that's, that's a that's an NT two A. I think. Yeah, NT two A. Good mics, guys. Good professional Sorry, mics. NT one A. NT one A. So decent mics. You know, get yourself focus right. You know, audio and that. Get yourself a nice mic stand. You know, get yourself a decent laptop. You can set up anywhere and get busy. You know, really. You yeah. know, start recording like or getting your demos together. The, the X Factor dude. Yeah. Like yeah, from the from the from the from the boat wherever. Trust me, like <laughs> if you've got, like now it's become especially because one of the good things that has come out of the pandemic, yeah, you know, and and there's very few of those, believe me. But one yeah. of the good things that has come out of it is the ability to work remotely is is more widely acceptable now. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, before yeah. if you would have said, "Oh, let me do a voiceover from home," most yeah. people would be like hesitant yeah. about it. Whereas now, everybody's been doing that. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So if you've got the kit. There's no reason why you can't carry yeah. on doing that. If they really want to book you or they really want your voice, mm. you know, Zoom sessions and stuff like that have become something that are uh, accepted. Yeah. As long as you can, re as long as you can record at your end and then send on a we transfer link yeah. or something yeah. like that, then it's all good. Yeah. You know, and adjustments can be made, you know, and stuff. But um, yeah, it's been a yeah, bro. Like the voice of the industry is open. Mm -hmm. There's a, you know, there's a, it's a big, big arena of areas. You have to look at. You know, people always ask me, uh, what, um, oh, yeah, that, while I'm here. Yeah, this one's for you, Elika. I know you're listening and watching. Shout out to her. Big up some of the supporters and people that, you know, I've I got so much love for people that's been on the journey and watched me grow as a person and see my growth and ask me questions. I appreciate you. Trust me. Sometimes I may not get back to you right mm -hmm. away, but it's just life. Trust me. There's a lot going on in life, and I'm sure in your life it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But... Big shout out to Elika because she's someone recently in my mind now and she asked me this question the other day. So this is a scenario for like uh, someone that's a, has a passion for wants to, wants to, was a musician, hasn't got into that craft for a while, went into a different field completely away from music life, has a passion for talking, wants to, has a passion for mental health mm -hmm. and wants to like 
find a way to express that in conversation. And there was one stage I was trying to bring her in the radio show at the time. It didn't happen for her at the time. And she like wants to know kind of how to get back in the game. And again, it's some, I'm like, because it's so many, when people ask this question, it's so techy because there's so many ways. But my initial thing now is just to say, just get started. Man. Yeah. If you've got a real podcast, just get talking because nowadays just got to put the content out there and then if Ray, if anyone's interested I guess they will shout you to do some stuff yeah. you know what I mean it's like your it's an- natural your answer's the only answer yeah. really because you know I get asked stuff like that all the time you know how can I get on the radio yeah. how can I do this and, and, and my answer is always you need to be doing it oh, you know like you yeah. can't you, you, you can't get signed on the radio if you're just hoping to get signed yeah. on the radio and you're just chilling at home yeah, you know yeah. watching like I don't know Emmerdale um, you know, you need to be you need to be actively doing it. And there's enough yeah. now opportunities. You know, mm. even if you don't have a community radio station yeah, yeah, yeah. in your area or an internet radio station, you you touched on it there. Podcasts. You yeah, know, yeah. anybody has the ability now to be able to create a podcast. Just start doing it, even if it doesn't get big listenership. Yeah, you know, people don't are scared be, of the listenership. Do, thing. do not be bound yeah. by the listenership or the, or the viewers or the stats yeah, or the numbers yeah. when you're starting from out. The stats, bro. What you're doing yeah. is you're demonstrating a product. You're demonstrating yeah. a thing, you mm. know, and you are showing everybody the, you know, this this thing can be good, and then and then you can take it to companies or you can take it mm. to people and say, look, I've been doing this thing. Here's an example of it. Um, would you be interested in yeah. you know collaborating or? Um, being a part of it you know um so that 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 for me is a big bit of advice just just do it yeah just do it stop moaning about it just do it just do it because there's no it's not no it's not a route like i don't know there's this perception that it's just like because you know someone that does it and you think they can just like just snap you into what they exactly do right now Mm. like so if i know you you can just bring me on one extra and give me a show that's kind of like <laughs> how things are perceived sometimes. Yeah. You know, like, you know someone that does that and they just think, oh, you know him, so you can just bring you yeah. in. And, and there's the it's same like, thing, but it's not that. Yeah, right. it's, listen, like, the amount, of, yeah. the amount of people that I know who, yeah. you know, they're just like, can you play my tune on one extra? And I'm like, it's not as simple as that. Yeah. You know, like, and, you know, that, that that's... Look, don't get me wrong, but I'm sure people out there will always want to help each other. Yeah. I always want to help as many yeah. people as I can. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm very much not one of those people that has got in the industry and wants to kind of hoard it all for yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you can't. Yeah. And, it, and it turns you bitter being that yeah. way. Anyway. Yeah, 100%. But like, yeah. you can't, like, you. You can't. You can give somebody advice, but you can't always like open the door for them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What yeah. I mean, you can give them a, the advice that they would need to open the door, or the tools oh, that the, they would need yeah, to the pick tools. the lock. Yeah, you know to what pick I mean? the lock, and you know what I mean. They're giving them the gems. They have to just have the the gem. You take the gems, and because they're gems, I remember that like to stay with me, man, just mm. forever. Like you know, just oh, it's just gems of advice that I'm like, rah, like I'll never forget that yeah. ever. Or just watching. Watching people do it, even learning, just shadowing people, watching pe- if it's anyone you know, and you say, oh, I just want to watch you do it." Like even the, big shout out to Ella. I remember she come up and just watched me do a radio show and yeah. stuff like that. Just watch. I shadowed loads of shows. I remember coming to you talking about coming BBC and when Whitney, rest in peace, Whitney Houston. I remember when she passed away. I was on air with Mr. Jam that day and Radio One show, just chilling out, shadowing him, watching what he does. Yeah. And that you know this kind of thing, just shadowing, watching people do, but and they're all experiences and you learn right from there, them. Right there, yeah. Right? I mean, when a when a when a big artist like that passes away, yeah. you know, you're you were in the studio yeah. when those guys had to deal with it, and that's yeah. a, a bit of experience that that's invaluable. Yeah, you, know, you saw how they did it on yeah. the biggest station in the country, yeah. the biggest youth station in the yeah. country. So yeah, it was that he sat. I think it's one of his Saturday night. He was mad relaxed, but the way he handled it, yeah, it was breaking news on one of those press websites. And yeah, man, it's like, well, yeah, voiceover artists, you know, you got some gems, you know, we can't give you all the gems, you know, you mm-hmm. got to go out there and do your thing and establish yourself and build a career and just, I'd just say just to close it off, man, just, Work on your styles, your areas that you want to get involved in. I'm not saying randomly do 10 areas. Just pick a few strong ones. Put it on your demo. You know, they don't, as Nick said before earlier on, they don't have to be real voiceovers. People say, oh, but I haven't got no experience. Just make up stuff like, you know, make up a campaign and just put it on. Because people just want to hear your voice. And then just start, you know, just start building. If you want to shop it around, send it off to agencies. The information's out there. It's online. Mm-hmm. Do your research, you know. Just do your research diligently. 
you'll find your you'll find some contacts, some feedback will come back to you, and maybe you'll get an opinion from someone experienced, and they can give you something a gem that will help you build. But if you're really on it, you gotta be in it for the long run. Again, if if it's something that you just think is a quick buck, and like this is another thing we were talking about earlier with radio and voice of entertainment, so many people coming into it thinking they can just do it. And it's not that. You have to really love what you're doing mm -hmm. and people need to actually see that you love what you're doing. And that's going to be the long jerry because those are the ones who survive, like yourself. People that are naturally are passionate about what they do and that comes across every time they're on air, every time they pick up a mic. It's very natural. And I just want to give you your flowers and toast the last piece of juice to that. Thank <laughs> you very much, bro. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. What's that? Is that right there? That's longevity and that's a career. That's legacy that you can look back proudly of your kids and that and say, right, I've done that. I've done this over this period of time. This was a staple moment in my career. This is how I built it. And it was off like love, integrity. Um, you know, you, you know, you obviously you get paid to do what you do, but it's a growth. Like it's mm -hmm. like, and you love what you do, loving what you do, not just being in it to say it's the, it's the, it's the job of the moment. So let me just jump on this. It's like, it's in a craft that, okay, I know I'm tired at it, I'm building it, and I'm going to water it like a flower and keep growing, bro. So salute you. Thank you very um, much, Yeah, bro. man. And pleasure, bro, for joining me, man. And no, yeah, no, no. pleasure. Where's with Blake? All good. Nick Bright in the house. Nick, um, yeah, voiceover-wise, like, where can we hear you right now? What you got going on, bro? Like, for the like I said, the, the MTV chart is kind of, that's a weekly thing that, I'm, yeah. that I do. Um, is that the, like the top top 40? Top yeah, I do the top 40 and top sick. 20 yeah. and then the chart update. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if anybody's ever put MTV on, I feel like yeah. those shows are on all the time. So it's yeah, like, you've got probably, MTV, iconic. You've probably heard that. Yeah. And, like, and like I said, the, uh, the, the, the MTV Movie and TV Awards is oh, floating brilliant. around as well. Yeah. Um, all, all over on MTV. Um, so yeah, just, just kind of like do like focusing on that at the moment. But like, I'm hoping when when things start yeah. kind of unlocking and and opening up again, yeah. um, we can start working on those big Nintendo s yeah. campaigns again. You there know what I mean? That's it, bro. The big boys, the yeah. big campaigns. Cooking that big fish. You know? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Trust me, that big mackerel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's been a pleasure. You know, Dan Blake with Nick Bright, Voices with Blake, episode two. Um, we'll see you later, Voices, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Listen and watch Voices with Blake on Dan Blake TV on YouTube.